Chapter 18, Problem Number 31. In this particular case, in Part A, we're asked to calculate the current price of the stock. The stock trades at a price-earnings ratio of 10. What that represents is for every dollar of earnings, the corporation has can acquire $10 of cash. So if the corporation has earnings of $2, the share price will be 20. The corporation has $5 million in earnings and 1 million shares. So that works out to be five. So in this particular case, they have $5 of earnings per share times the 10 means the share price is $50. Now, if the company pays 4 million to pay back dividends, how much will dividends per share be? So in this case, we simply divide the $4 million that they're paying back and the dividends per share, which is different than earnings per share, will be simply $4 dividends per share. So the dividends per share is $4. Now, if the corporation were to use the $4 million to repurchase shares, at a premium of $54, they'd be able to acquire or reacquire just over $74,000, $74,074 shares. So simply divide the amount of money by the share price that they're paying. And that tells you how many shares they're going to reacquire. Now, in part D, the number of shares outstanding after the repurchase would be 925,926 because you have reacquired the 74,074. The earnings per share now are 5 million. The earnings do not change, but you have a smaller number of shares outstanding. And when you divide it by the new number, it's $5.40. Now, in Part E, you take the $5.40 of earnings per share, multiply it by the 10 uh, multiplier, the P-E ratio, and you wind up with a share price of $54. So you have increased the value to the shareholders from $50 to $54. Now, with the cash dividend, so if you gave the customers the cash dividend, they'd have the share worth $50 and they'd have the dividend worth $4. They'd have a total value of $54. If you don't pay them the dividend and use that to buy back shares, their share price will now go up to $54. So it has no effect. There is a lot of discussion in finance that dividend policy does not matter. But as I mentioned in the lecture, you just need to have one. So in this particular case, in part G, there is no effect. It's $54 either way, but there is a difference when it comes to tax effects. So if you take a course in taxation, you'll go into this in more detail because one is considered a capital gain versus a cash dividend, and it's affected by depending on what level of income you have. But the bottom line is, no, it does not affect how the shareholders perceive it unless you factor in the tax effect, which we do not in this course. Now, in Part H, why might a corporation buy back shares? Because why would you buy anything in life? Because you either think it's fairly valued or it's a good deal. If something is overpriced, you're not going to buy it. So if the company feels that the shares are currently underpriced at $50, they'll go and they'll buy them at $50 because they're really, and the, what that will do is it'll cause the share price to go up to 54, which they may feel is a more fair uh, price for their shares. And if you're a shareholder, you're happy that your share price went up by $4.